everybody, I'm Suzanne, and in today's video, it's kind of a twofer, because I'm gonna paint a little cottontail rabbit in the snow. So I'm gonna show you how I, you know, how one of the ways that I actually approach snow. And I wanted to keep the colors very cool because my rabbit's colors are a little bit warmer. So, uh, so you're gonna get to see how I paint a little cottontail rabbit, and you're gonna get to see how I paint snow. Now, the pattern of the rabbit's hair is known as a goody, and a goody can be applied to a lot of other species of animals. You think of coyote's fur, or you know, you've got that salt and pepper, that salt and pepper look. That's your typical agouti pattern or, or, or coloration. So you're gonna see how I do an agouti fur. So sit back and, and watch how I attempt to paint this cottontail rabbit in the snow. So if you are my subscribers, as always, thank you so much. And if not, you know, consider subscribing and know that today's video will be on my Patreon channel. So let's go ahead and jump into this little bunny. Okay, so you see I've done my little sketch of a little, just a little cottontail bunny. And I make these little marks on the side like this, and, and this is all in just uh, vine charcoal. And I do that because I know this will be framed. Our substrate today happens to be an oil primed linen. It's a 10 by 10. And so it is kind of smooth. It's not as smooth and slick as my um, um, panels, that I, the masonite panels that I like to paint on, but it's pretty smooth. It's a nice, nice little taut canvas or linen piece. So the colors that we have here, let's see if I can remember here, we've got Payne's Gray, Doxazine Purple, Ultramarine Blue, and Raw Umber. I've got Titanium White up here. I've got, um, I have Titanium White here, and down here, the one that's slipping off my um, palette is Ice Blue by Richardson. It's kind of a, a grayish white, but it's a good color for snow. Okay, so here I have my rabbit colors. So basically I have it divided up in some snow colors and rabbit colors. So I have titanium white again. I have ivory black. I have burnt umber. I have burnt sienna. I have uh, yellow ochre, and this happens to be a charvine. This is French yellow ochre. That is a Michael Harding. This is uh, something earth. Terra Earth, I believe, by Sinaye. And this is um, the Italian Umber, Green Umber by um, Michael Harding. I wasn't really sure. I know this is, I want this rabbit to be more cool in temperature because he's, I'm going to have this little bunny just set in the snow. And I wanted, you know, the bunny looks like he's hunkered down, ready to be <laughs> pretty cold. So I wanted the green umber because oftentimes I'm gonna be mixing that into some of the fur. So let's go ahead and get started with this little bunny. And I'm gonna try to do it as a la prima as I can. Okay, our brush lineup today, I have the uh, rosemary number four Shiraz pointed round. I'm using the number six ivory long filbert. I also have the number three eclipse long filbert. And I have the number three Shiraz filbert. Now I probably will also be using, since I am doing a lot of snow, I may be adding the 12 rosemary long flat series 279. Uh, it's a natural hair brush. I like this for blending. And if I need stuff to stay soft, this is a good softening brush. So let's go ahead and jump into this bunny. Since I did just a very loose sketch with the vine charcoal, and as you could see earlier, I kind of smudged it a little bit. I've got to set my sketch in, and I'm just using a little bit of basically just raw umber paint very thinly, just kind of securing my lines, so to speak, of, you know, so I can go ahead and block this bunny in. Now, as after I get this all just kind of sketched in, I'll actually start doing an application of paint. But when I'm putting the paint down, you'll see I'm going very thinly. I'm basically practicing the whole fat on lean concept where I'm putting all my dark colors down first, really and just doing it very thinly and i just need to secure where my bunny's going and block them in
even in the very early stages of blocking in, I am still taking my brush stroke and going in the direction that the fur lies. Uh, I think that's imperative. Also, I'm being very careful of temperature shifts and uh, color changes here. Since this is a goody fur, and as I kind of explained earlier, a goody fur in itself is, imagine just like a strand of hair with several different colors. So, you know, they usually have black tips and there may be a lighter undercoat to one piece of fur. So I have to kind of move through this that way, knowing that the fact that the rabbit's kind of bunched up because she's cold, you know, certain hairs will be more showing black on the tips and uh, other fur may lie down and you'll see the lighter under undercoat, so to speak. So I'm, I'm being observant. I mean, I'm looking at my reference picture and I, I can be observant, but um, this is how I'm, you know, I, I constantly have these ideas rolling around in my head. One, I'm laying down even the base coat, just the very, very beginning stages of the um, um, blocking in. Now I'm using a pointed Shiraz here. The, it's a pointed round Shiraz, a wonderful versatile brush. It allows me to really get even some of the detail in with this larger brush. And I'm looking at all the temperature shifts. Now one of the colors I use quite a bit of is sort of that ecru color that I made by using yellow ochre, a little tiny dab of um, ivory black, a lot of titanium white, and a little bit of dioxazine purple. That just brings that yellow down and flattens it out a little bit. It's kind of a putty color, and I use quite a bit of that. That's a, most of the light hairs that you see going in but I'm still just kind of getting in the detail and figuring out where all the lights and darks go keep in mind too that when I'm in an early stage of a painting like this I'm almost always squinting uh, the squinting allows me to see shape and form without being um, bamboozled if you will <laughs> by the colors Now that I got the basic rabbit shape in, I'm going to take this Eclipse Long Filbert. It's a number three, and I'm going to go ahead and suggest where the background's going. And I'm, I'm wanting to create some branches and twigs around the rabbit so as to not leave her uh, vulnerable. That's just me. That's how my brain works. So I'm actually look, working with several different references as that I've got like basically a, one reference. Well, there's actually two references for the rabbit itself and a different reference for the background. And I've also got to kind of figure out where the shadows are going. So I'm taking the, um, I've, I'm sorry, I'm taking um, um, the ultramarine blue with Payne's gray and a little bit of the uh, Daxazine purple and that's basically the color you see me doing here and you're probably wondering what the heck is she painting? What I'm painting in is the shadows on the snow that the trees are creating with the light and this now I'm going in with a light purple color in between the shapes and that's my snow. So it'll all make sense, but the color that I've mixed here is titanium white, daxazine purple, a little ultramarine blue. And uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's chilling down, but this is me creating the snow.
Now you can see that there is even different values of the shadows that I'm creating in the snow because some will seem a little bit more intense the closer they are to you. So obviously that shadow that's right near the bunny's face is a lot darker than some of the shadows behind it. And I'm taking that soft brush I talked about in the beginning of the video and I'm softening everything up, just kind of taking off the edges and softening it up. And you can see that's creating a very nice look for my shadows. Uh, you have to forgive me. My dog Singer is working on a bone and he's got it on the hardwood floor and guys I try to get him to <laughs> to do it on the rug but that's what that weird noise is in the background. But anyway um, so yeah I am taking that same um, Eclipse Filbert number three brush and kind of you know making my tree branches a lot more solid. So compared to the shadows this will the tree branches and twigs and stuff will be very very uh sharp and um more in focus so i'm just kind of suggesting where all the branches are going and keeping my little bunny a little bit more secure
okie dokie. I'm using my little ivory dagger. I believe that's a uh, uh, either a one eighth or um, inch ivory dagger. And I'm putting a lot of the darker guard hairs in. So it may seem a little extreme at first, but I will keep layering the colors up and you'll see a lot of the light and darks will go in and it will all make sense. You'll, you'll start to see it just really make form. And again, I have to remember that some of the dark areas that I see are actually shadows in the fur and that this bunny is really wadded up. You know, she's trying to stay warm. So yeah, I've got to remember that too. And there's lots of little folds and fun little areas to to do and I'm I'm taking advantage of this little pointed Shiraz it's a number four and I am even doing some of the guard hairs on the outside of the rabbit so lots to do and you'll see how I actually roll it up now I guess it's a little time to paint an eye and I have this little tiny number one uh, pointed Shiraz it's a little bent I think I got bent in a transport but it works just great and uh, so you'll see I'm putting a little bit it's almost not easy to tell but that is not a completely black eye that I definitely has a warmer brown to it um, and then the dark purple sorry for the bounce on my uh, camera but it's on a, on, a, on a kind of a springy little surface so you, I'm actually putting in browns around the eye too and the eyeball itself is taking shape. So you can tell that that's a little round marble in a socket, right? And that shine right above the eye, that helps create the roundness. And I'm using uh, basically a dioxazine purple and ultramarine blue and white mixture to do that shine. And that's because a lot of what you see that's shining is what's this, the area that the rabbit's in. And of course, there's lots of snow. So that's the same colors I'm using in the snow. And I'm just... You know, popping out in the color where I can put it and especially there's always a nice little light area around the eye which makes that little dark eye look even more beautiful After putting down kind of a base coat to the top of the little bunny's head, um, I am going to take one of my um, dagger brushes that happens to be somewhat frayed. It's just one that I've used to death. And I'm taking advantage of that. So if you have a an old brush, you will find ways of repurposing it. I generally just, I don't throw them out. So I am using that brush to create the light lighter hairs that you can see on top of this rabbit's head and I'm being very conscious of the direction that the fur is going and trying to make sure that I, I stay true to that so you can see I just loaded the lighter colors on top of that medium tone and then I switched brushes on back onto the pointed round Shiraz Filbert and slowly creating all the forms and shapes in this little rabbit and uh, what a fun piece this is truly a fun piece and I just love rabbits noses and lips I think rabbits have the cutest little mouth with their little bottom lip and you'll see I'll get it in the photo reference that I'm working from doesn't really show it well so I'm using other photo references to create the mouth area on this rabbit and uh, yeah she's coming she's coming about so I got to pull back a little bit so you can see more and I'm still, so you can see that that brush looks a little rough, but being that it is rough, it's creating more than one hair for me at a time. And it's really the perfect brush for the job. An old, I think it's a quarter inch 
or maybe an eighth inch um, ivory dagger by Rosemary. Working its little butt off, it sure is, because there's lots and lots of hair to create. So you can see that after I put some of the dark hairs down, I'm putting light hairs on top. And that's right here, you're seeing me create the form. So I'm actually rolling those, the edges of those um, hairs to, to go with the direction of the fur and the way the body is rolling. And, and rabbits, especially females, have what's known as a dewlap. So they have an area where they can pull fur to line their nest. And that's why they usually have these little rolls or tufts of fur under their chin. And uh, yeah, so I'm filling her out and putting in all the lighter features and lighter areas. Now the feet are so cute and I'm, I'm really trying to get that in. And I'm using um, a number one Eclipse filbert, long filbert, getting in her toes. And I have to say the angle that this is, it's somewhat distorted. The rabbit's not quite that uh, dwarfed looking. Um, it's just the angle that the uh, camera's in. You'll see at the end. Now they do have that lighter undercoat and I'm trying my best to get the whites in, but sometimes it's a little too strong and I have to back off and, and try to uh, soften it up a little bit. But yeah, it's happening. And more of the same process going in. So you can see I'm, I'm putting down dark 
uh, values to create the folds in the rabbit's body, you know, delineating where the uh, hip and back leg go versus the forearm, and then all putting in all this fun little pa paint on these little feet. And, you know, it's, it's coming about. I'm really, really enjoying this piece, you guys gotta know. And you can see how the order in which I'm layering the paint. I'm putting my lightest layers down last. And um, towards the end, I can afford to go a little impasto, especially in some of the areas that have a lot of the white. Now what I'm doing now, and I'm just kind of creating more dark values so that when I build up the snow, whoops, I think I fell down a little bit there. But when I build up the snow, I'll have a shadow behind it. Now I gotta finish this ear, and I'm using um, Payne's Gray, and because uh, I didn't really want it black black, I wanted it to be more of a cool color. And uh, ivory black tends to be a warm black, so I'm I'm actually going with a, a straight on Payne's Gray, and then putting this lighter color on top, and I'm using the the that small little uh, pointed round Shiraz brush. I get those little ears in, those sweet little ears. And uh, now the original reference that I was working from to do this piece, actually the rabbit had a lot of snow on her body and I didn't want to do that to her. So I have to kind of fudge a little bit on the um, ears and make them, um, because I can't depend on the snow to uh, tell where one ear starts, stops and one ear starts. So, But I'm putting the lighter values on top and then slowly building it up. And I like the little wrinkles in her forehead. It's like the, you know, so I'm putting all these little dark areas and then bringing the light ha hairs on top of the dark hairs. It's, it's constantly playing with dark on light, light on dark, knowing where the edges are and where to stop and start. But it is fun, trust me.
As we're getting closer to the end of the painting, and you can see I'm just loading the very tip of that brush. Just the tip, y'all. I, I, I don't want to have to press because I want the hairs to look fine. So I would much rather load more often than to try to get the most out of a brush and press harder because then I get really fat hairs and I don't want that. So I keep going back in with that really awesome little worn out <laughs> ivory dagger, which is creating this hair so nicely for me. And knowing where to go where the temperature shifts are because this part of the rabbit that I'm painting now has a lot more grays to it. And it's a little bit cooler in some areas and some areas of the rabbit look really, really warm. So I'm going back and forth between the colors and I'm just, but I'm really pleased with how this rabbit looks because it definitely has that agouti appearance to its fur. As I'm rounding the corner on finishing this piece, now I'm actually going in, with, in some areas with straight titanium white and going a little bit more impasto uh, with the actual paint because it creates that blush, furry look that I was after. And I'm putting in just little tiny light hairs. Some of them are straight white and some you see I'm going over to that interesting little fun putty color that we made that was uh, created using um, mostly titanium white, yellow ochre, ivory black, and dioxazine purple. And, uh, and I'm getting in those little lips. I kind of saved this part for last because my photo reference wasn't very good. So I've, I've got the little tiny lips and I'll, I'll refine it. And I still got to get in there and do some whiskers. And of course, you know, with me, I'm going to use um, one of my uh, daggers to do the whiskers, but I'm getting close to finishing it up and uh, creating that little mouth and okay yeah see there's a little bunny and she's just adorable and yes folks the whole time singer has been slinging toys all through my uh, voiceover here today <laughs> today so all those fun noises you hear in the background well that's just singer but yeah now i'm doing the little whisker tracks in her face gotta get those in and then I'll, after i put the whisker tracks in i'm going in with a um you can see me mixing off on the side. It's a yellow ochre, um, ivory black, and titanium white mixture. And I'm also using a wonderful color, and I'm using quite a bit of it. It's the, um, the Italian green umber, and that's wonderful. It's a nice, cool, semi-transparent uh, paint color by Michael Harding that is wonderful for uh, doing cool yellows. So the eye, oh my gosh, the eyelashes on this little rabbit are adorable. And I just, you know, keeping it soft, trying to keep it natural and keeping it soft, really having fun with this. I mean, you can see I'm going a little bit more impasto with this area of the, the dewlap and the little area of the nose. Yep, we're getting close, getting ready to wrap it up. Here in a minute, you're gonna see me put some whiskers in and then we'll be done.
as I have this impasto snow, um, I want to go ahead and sign um, the piece. And I wanted to do it by scrape using my paint scraper. So once I've got that kind of snow kind of chunked in, and I really wanted it to be chunky there, um, I'm using the paint scraper and basically just carving my name into the wet paint. And I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with that. I just hit in some little areas and even putting a little sparkle into the snow by adding some white into even some of the background snow and giving the branches too a little bit more depth and um, so putting some dark values in where they need to go and some light values and yep about wrapped it up but yeah I'm whole I really enjoyed doing this piece I hope you enjoyed watching and if you have any questions please feel free to leave in the comments section I'll get to you and uh, know that this will be available on Patreon so you can see the whole thing in its entirety. Yeah, looking at the palette, you see we got a big old hot mess, but I still kept it pretty separate with my, you know, rabbit. See, that's air quotes. And it could be a bunny. Depends on how you look at it. But here we have what I considered my rabbit colors. And you can tell I didn't use a lot, like burnt sienna hardly at all, uh, even the burnt umber. I used more raw umber and the cooler colors going into the rabbit. Uh, this was the color I used a lot of, and that was the yellow ochre, um, titanium white, a little bit of, tiny bit of ivory black and dioxazine purple. And then I had the warmer version of that, which was basically, you know, the burnt sienna, I mean the, uh, the yellow ochres and and the titanium white so yeah that's our palette it's a big hot mess but it made sense right and so yeah this the signature is more of a big thick impasto mess but you can see it enough and i had made my marks on my canvas because knowing that it will be popped into a frame it needs to have those marks so there's our little cold bunny in the snow and i hope you enjoyed today's video So he does look cold, right? And I think you understand what I mean, but the rabbit itself was warm in temperature compared to the snow. And I wanted to be able to play that off. Um, also, using the purples with the yellows and the, you know, the purple in the snow with the yellow and the rabbit, again, is another complimentary color kind of playground for me. And um, me not wanting to leave the rabbit completely unsheltered, put all the sticks and things in there because, well, you know, I don't want him to be, or her to be completely unprotected. So you can see too the fur and give you, here's a little close up of how that fur lays in. So I think um, if you guys have any questions about how I uh, did this fur, um, you know, leave it in the comment section. If you're curious about the palette, anything, just leave it in the comment section. I'll get to you, I promise. And know that you can watch the full length version with me just chatting away and people coming in the studio and all that good stuff. You can watch that on Patreon if you're interested. So yeah, this was fun. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, you know what to do. Give me a thumbs up. I like that. And let me know I'm doing a good job. If there's something that you'd like to see me paint, Leave that in the comment section too. And if you're not a subscriber, you know what to do. Go ahead right there, hit the subscribe button. And uh, that's it. So from Kingsport, Tennessee, I want to say thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.